As the Vikrant has started sailing off the sea, the discussions around the fighter jets operating from the vessel has heated up. We have been watching many interviews of senior naval officers regarding the same and the conclusion drawn from all that discussion is that Navy is willing to support indigenous fighter jet which is Naval Tejas but they'll be used mainly for training of the pilots rather than full operational mode like MiG-29K. In today's video, we are talking about the possible fighter jets and their numbers that Navy will be operating from INS Vikrant and why Naval Tejas is facing operational challenges as a deck-based fighter jet. Indian Navy is looking to procure 18 Naval Tejas MK-1 jets of FOC that is Final Operational Clearance Standard. These jets will be used as a trainer jets for naval pilots to sharpen their skills in deck-based landing and takeoff from an aircraft carrier. At present, Indian Navy is using BAE Hawk jets which does not have capabilities to land and take off from an aircraft carrier. Once the pilot masters the training on BAE Hawk, they will be trained on deck-based landing and take off using the Naval Tejas and then at the end, they will be flying the mighty MiG, MiG-29K. However, all these 18 Naval Tejas will not be operating all together from the deck. We can expect Vikrant to carry 12 MiG-29K, 8 Naval Tejas and 10 helicopters. These 10 helicopters will be performing different roles. Six of them will perform anti-submarine warfare load, two of them for electronic warfare and last two in surveillance and reconnaissance role. Now that we have the understanding of Vikrant's air wing, let's try to understand what are the limitations of naval pages and why it cannot be used as a regular deck-based fighter jet. As we know that Vikrant is an aircraft carrier with tow bar in which fighter jets should be able to perform short takeoff from a short and inclined runway with full payload which we call as ski jump. At the same time, the landing of fighter jets is almost like crash landing where they must hook themselves with one of the three arrestor wires. Therefore, the fighter jets operating from a tow bar based carrier must have high thrust to weight ratio. Another point to be noted here is that stow bar carrier must maintain a speed of 20 to 30 knots in order to generate the wind speed required on deck which is required for the takeoff of the fighter jets. Also the naval variant of any aircraft needs to have a heavy and sturdy undercarriage because they have to take off from a very small runway and have to literally crash on the aircraft carrier during arrested landing and stop within a few seconds which puts a huge amount of pressure on the undercarriage. The heavy landing gear further increases the pressure on Tejas engine while taking off. If we look into Tejas specs, it needs a runway of minimum 1700 meter to take off when fully fueled and armed with no wind and on a level surface whereas that of mid 29 k is just 400 meters. Tejas stall speed is around 220 km per hour at sea level at 15 degree Celsius. The hotter air gets, the less dense it becomes increasing the stall speeds and takeoff distances while reducing the thrust and lift. The INS Vikrant is 260 meter long with approximately 200 meter long takeoff strip. An aircraft carrier with 12 degree ski jump and sailing into a headwind can reduce the advertised takeoff distance by 40 to 60 percent due to factors such as ship speed, wind speed, a ground effect constant to aircraft's velocity. Still, it would need a runway of 600 to 700 meter long to take off with full weapon payload or a very powerful engine or possibly a twin engine accelerating the plane forward providing even more lift before it could fall to a watery grave. The ski jump test conducted on Naval Tejas in 2019 was with two R-73 missiles and two W missiles as you can see in the video. Still, it's not the full payload of the Tejas and usually naval operations 
require more endurance due to which they have to carry additional fuel tank. The full pilot test of Naval Tejas has not been conducted till now and it's difficult to say Tejas can or cannot perform takeoff from Vikrant considered many factors as discussed ever. If we assume that Tejas is able to take off with full weapon payload, the addition of heavy landing gear would further reduce the weapon and fuel carrying capacity of Tejas. The land-based LCA has a 500 km combat radius and about 5300 kg weapon load carrying capacity. So the naval version will have much lesser combat radius and weapon carrying capacity than it. This is the reason why naval Tejas cannot be used as a regular deck-based fighter aircraft. It will be helpful to carry out missions along with MiG-29K with lesser payload and limited endurance. Therefore, Navy will keep them mostly for training of its pilot and if needed for limited operational role. This was today's update. Please let us know what is your views about these in comment section. Feel free to post your comments and suggestions about any topic related to defense sector on which you want to hear from us. With this, I would like to say goodbye and jai hind friends. Please like and subscribe our video if you have not done already. We will be soon back with more interesting and amazing development happening in defense sector.